there are no people that we have to call today and ask if they will be a part of my wedding. So already sorry to disappoint the masses who enjoyed last week's episode so much. But welcome to the weekend. Nick Karski really? and Zensky with you here. What were Come you on. saying? You got to set the bar higher than, than, than that, man. Look. If I'm being perfectly, totally honest with you and totally transparent, I've got a massive headache right now. Peel back the curtain, man. You I, always do it. I don't know why my head just is pounding. I don't know what the deal is. I've had so much water today to try and get rid of the maybe the potential dehydration. I've had some extra caffeine today as well because maybe it was a lack of caffeine that I just needed. I've gone for everything. I've done everything. Anything that I could possibly think of to make this headache go away. And it's been with me for the last few hours. So this show is going to be very interesting. So he, here's the thing, because lack of caffeine, I get it, because that happens to me, right? If I don't have my coffee by 1030 at the latest in the morning, I am feeling it. Sure. Right? So I get that. But too, like, what is too much caffeine for you? Because you already have a ton to begin with. I think today I finished with a grand total, including oh right now, five cups of coffee. No, 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 man. What, what dude, happened? Dude, dude, you're in for a world of hurt later in your life with if you keep this up. Moderation. Zen's yeah, psh, yeah, clearly. No, moderation with, with caffeine and water. Back and forth. Mix it up a little bit. Oh, my God. You're a mess. Am I, though? Yeah, right now, yes, you're a hot mess. You're a hot mess in a Yankees cap and a uh, Dr. Seuss-looking shirt. Yeah, it's a Buffalo Bills-esque sort of shirt with Dr. Seuss. But thank you for calling me hot. Anytime. Is that my... <laughs> is, what? Is, that my res- is that my responsibility as, as your best man to compliment you? I don't know, but it was a little creepy. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll agree. Headlines. Here's what you missed. Um, so, you know, I would it would actually be a little better to be a cargo ship right now. Dear God, you're going with this nonsense again? Uh-huh. Can we just put it into perspective that last week, <laughs> Zensky oh so seriously says, you know what I'd hate to be right now? I'd hate to be a cargo ship. Yeah. In what world has anybody ever thought to themselves... I would hate to be a cargo ship. So it's the equivalent of in COVID times right now, you're at an ATM, like one of those little walk up ATMs in a parking lot with like two machines inside. And you're only like being a respectful person. You're only going in one, one per time, right? The person who's in there right now is taking their time like with three separate transactions to take out different like denominations of currency you're like third back in line to try to get inside the atm so this is the analogy of the person at the atm being the big cargo ship stuck in the canal and me being one of the smaller cargo ships waiting to go through the canal work with me here be with me anyway the hell is happening don't worry about it so here why we go. didn't i think about putting some like alcohol into my coffee tonight i don't know i don't know anyway <laughs> the suez canal is open to ship traffic again Hooray. because the ever the ever given yeah drop the applause there we go the ever given the 224,000 ton vessel that was holding up all of these ships last week was uh refloated you had these egyptian guys on uh, tugboats working to get it freed and it is on its merry way and like we were talking about last week this is just a really big deal for global trade global the global economy about 12 percent of global trade passes through the suez canal every uh day or week or whatever this is and um yeah, nine billion dollars worth of worth of materials per day. So it's just a good thing for the world commerce to have this back open, so we can get our cinnamon toast crunch on time again. Okay. Um, at first, when you told me this story, 
I thought to myself last week, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, why is this a big deal? It made like to me, it was one of those things where I'm like, wow, a ship is stuck. Who cares? But then I kind of understood the implications of what goes into all of this and, you know, how much the Suez Canal uh, transports uh, ships from one place to another and everything like that. And you kind of put it into perspective with all those money, you know, the dollar signs and everything that kind of comes with it. So, yeah, the more and more that this happened, the more and more I kept hearing the economic impacts that it was having. And I thought to myself, oh, I don't remember this in my history books about the Suez Canal being this big of a deal, but apparently it is. Um, so it's good to see that that ship has sailed. Yes, well, well done there. And it, to give you an idea uh, in another quantitative way of the backlog, this this was a backlog of about 50 ships carrying everything from consumer products to cars to oil to animals. They had livestock and actual living really? animals on these ships. And it was a big concern that um, some of the ships that were just waiting there, like in the canal, they were going to run out of food for the animals. So they're, they're just massive, massive implications. So $9 billion worth of goods passing through per day. And they were looking at about a three and a half day backlog. So figure about $45 billion of an impact across the global economy. So happy that that is back up and running again. I think a lot of people are actually pretty happy by it, to be honest. A lot of people are just kind of, I mean, it's also been a great time because we can, you know, have so many different puns and jokes with, with boats and ships and that ship is Sal. Ships. S-H-I-P-S. Ships. Yes. I-P-S. No, that's, that's no bullshit. Right. <laughs> no bullshit. No bullshit on to the weekend. Kiss my mast. K -k Kiss my aft. I mean, an aft? What the hell is an aft? Is that part that's of a the, boat? That, that's the back part of a ship. It's forward and aft, the bow and the stern. Wow. Have you ever been on a cruise before? Nope, not there once. There you go. On the on the next vacation after your honeymoon, get on a cruise. Okay. Um, this one is from to the weekends. Honorary research associate and one of your groomsmen, Mr. James Heasley. Ah, uh, he doesn't get paid for his role, by the way. He did. He didn't. But he, if if uh, he was paid, we pay him in pennies, like this Georgia man who demanded his final paycheck from an auto shop where he worked, and they delivered ninety one thousand five hundred greasy pennies as his final paycheck. Mm -hmm. This is in Peachtree, Georgia at OK Walker Luxury Auto Works, which is the most Peachtree, Georgia business name you could think of. He uh, demanded up to 950, this guy demanded $915 for his wages owed, uh, even though the manager has not counted on them to make sure he got every last cent. It was basically bad blood between the employee and the company, and so they said, hey, Screw off, buddy. Here's 91,500 pennies for your last paycheck. Makes no sense. That, that was a good one. I'll give you that. Um, It's so petty. I If, if you don't like somebody. So, so, so penny? Or so penny. Um, It makes no sense to me. It's just, and I wasn't trying to say sense in that sense um, a few seconds ago. God, that's a lot of sense. Um. But it's just, it, it's so petty that this is the, the route that you go to be yeah. like, all right, here you go. Last paycheck. Ka-ching. No. Just grow a pair, put some big boy pants on, and give the person their money. And don't be such a stingy, petty little you-know-what. Yep. Morons. So God. basically... So apparently this shop, like, they built Ford Mustangs for the Clint Eastwood film, Trouble with the Curve. I don't care what they did. I'm just I'm just saying what else is in the story here. Um, yeah, it's just it, bad blood between the two. They said he quit and then persistently demanded his final paycheck. And they're like, okay, here's your final paycheck. Thousands I'm, and thousands of pennies. Even if the employee is that bad... 
like to me it's just one of those things just just pay just pay up yeah just just get them out of your hair if you genuinely owe them money or whatever just just get it done and taken care of don't try to send a statement and make yourself look like a complete and total moron because here's the thing i'm on the side of the employee for this one not the side of the employer and it could be the employee who's a complete and total you know what but at the end of the day don't do stupid petty ridiculous things like this it's just it's mind-blowing to me i agree crazy so we've talked about the binghamton rumble ponies or the binghamton rumble hell yeah rumble ponies my ponies And, and just about the whole fad that there is with minor league baseball team names. Yeah. So, have you heard of the Chattanooga Lookouts? Chattanooga Lookouts. Obviously from Tennessee. I do not know. I wonder if they had a previous team name because that does not sound familiar to me or ring a bell. They very well could have, and maybe you could look it up while... Do you, know what, kind, do you know what kind of affiliation of baseball it is? Oh man, you're calling you're calling more audibles than me. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. Here, look it up while while I tell everybody about this. But you got the Chattanooga Lookouts, who their uh, most creative mascot name, right behind Mr. Met, Louie the Lookout, L O O I E. His costume, so the mascot his himself, the mascot costume was stolen, and thankfully he's been found safe and sound. The minor league baseball team in Tennessee uh, said that they found that, that it was uh, one of item, several items stolen from an office. Chattanooga police said the costume for Louis the Lookout mascot for the team was stolen Tuesday along with a hundreds of dollars worth of merchandise and other items from a locked office at the AT&T field in Chattanooga. Um... I would like Here's to point kicker, out. I would like the fun. To, go, no, go ahead with the kicker first because what I have the to kicker, say is not important. The kicker is the quote is that every the it says quote everyone in the state of Tennessee Tennessee can now breathe a sigh of relief because yes I'm sure they were all very stressed about the beloved mascot costume. Um, back. this is number one. This is a terrifying mascot, isn't it? It is a very very scary mascot. Number it's one. worse than Mr. Met. Um, basically, to put it into perspective, it's a red sort of uh, baseball cap, I guess, with 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 a mouth and eyes. Yeah. I thought it was a mustache at first, but it's the brim of the hat. Oh yeah, and it's just so terrifying to me. Um, they're apparently the double-A affiliate of the Cincinnati Reds, so that explains things a little bit. But regardless, did you hear how how it was found, by the way, Louie? I did not. He was found less than 150 yards from the stadium, and he was thrown on the side of the road in the pouring rain. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes me feel bad now. That's awful. You know, it took one day to find the mascot, and it was just a wet head sitting there, they say. Because even though these things are inanimate objects, like, you know, they're, they're, no, they're, they're not. Lo- they're not. They're they're very animated. No, no. The costumes themselves. Yeah, but not, you put not, somebody into the costume. It's an animated object. Yes, okay? obviously. So, th- so that's gosh. why you so that's why you think it's a real living thing with the personality. So if it got, got dumped by the side of the road, yeah, I'm going to have a little empathy for it. I'm going to feel bad. But anyway, Louie is back. With the Chattanooga Lookout. Terrifying. Terrifying. L-O-O-I-E. What What is it with baseball and just like weird spellings of names? Because you got to be so creative when it comes to minor league baseball. You've got to be so, so creative. Even in the MLB, the the major leagues, Andrew Jones, A-N-D-R-U-W. I was always so confused with that as a kid for obvious reasons. Are you comparing one of the best fielding gold glove outfielders to a mascot? No, I'm comparing the spelling of his name to that of a mascot. You're comparing, you're putting... No, 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 not his talent, not his his. It doesn't matter, record. you're putting the spelling of his name compared to a mascot. Completely different leagues, they're in a league of their own. That was bad. Yeah, no, no that, that wasn't was good. No. That was good. Don't you have a rim shot on there? No, I don't. I yes, specifically, you do. I specifically got rid of it because of people like you. Because of moments like this. 
Okay, so here's here's the thing though. So like you have you have control over our sound station command center, the roadcaster on your end, right? Yeah. Like I don't have that flexibility to do cool sound effects when you make your awful dad jokes. <laughs> I mean Appease me a little bit here. Here, all right. Thank you. That's all I wanted. Good was Lord. That so hard? No, that took a lot out of me. It took a lot out of me. You're a mess. I know. I'm absolutely a mess. I told you, man. I'm feeling it today for some reason. It just feels just crazy. Speaking of uh, baseball stuff, happy uh, opening day and opening weekend to everybody, to those who celebrate. Uh, when yes. this comes out, compared to when we are recording this, we will have a few games of baseball already under their belt. Hopefully, Mother Nature cooperates and we're able to actually have a lot of these games actually take place because you never know what to expect. All I can think of is back in 2000, 2003, I can't remember the exact year. It was very early on in the 2000s. I remember the Orioles and the Indians played a game in the snow, and it was it felt like a blizzard. If you can ever find the highlights of it, highly recommend that you check it out. But the Orioles and the... Uh, the uh, the Indians had a, a game that was in the snow, and it looked like it was a blizzard out there on the field. It was so so crazy. Yeah, it's like the equivalent of uh, you know the the fall classic, and when you're getting into like the the CS series or the the World Series, and you see the the players playing in long sleeves and stuff. It's it's not how baseball's supposed to be played, right? You see football players playing through the rain and the snow and the cold. That's normal. That is, it's the whole George Carlin bit, right, in, in a nutshell. Summer versus winter, yeah. hot versus cold, the whole thing. Baseball, you're supposed to be sweating your ass off at a stadium with a beer in your hand, like, watching baseball in the summer. Like, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. And that's the, the. I mean, that's, that's just part of it right now. You yeah. know, you never know what you're going to get in New York and Minnesota and Kansas City and, I mean, all of these other places. Kansas City maybe was a bad example, but I feel like they just have miserable weather and they're just miserable people and everything out yeah. there. So so I know the, the Red Sox are at home tomorrow, so they're probably going to get rained out at Fenway. Are the Yankees at home too Yankees then? play at home on opening day, and that's against the Blue Jays, and I'm not looking forward to that. Um, just simply because, one, chances are the weather is not going to work out in the favor of either team. But I also think that the the Blue Jays are going to pose lots of problems in the AL East this year. They've got such a good lineup with, you know, Vladdy Jr., Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Kevin yep. Biggio, Bo Bichette, um, Tasker. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name right now. Um, but, you know, just, you know, they, they have so much versatility. And I mean, the one um turn Dias or Teoscar Hernandez I can't say his name your name at all um and I can't remember his name clearly um <laughs> but they 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 do have some issues with injuries right now um Kirby Yates and George Springer who they just brought in to be their starting center fielder huge contract signed by him so um but I I still think they're a threat to the Yankees in the uh in the AL East yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting season. I think we talked about just how you know we hope to see fans back in the seats, but and there's gonna be fans uh, in the seats for a lot of these games, right? Oh, ex excellent point. Actually, I yeah, think just about if day. not every major league baseball stadium is set to have attendance for these games. And the last team, if I'm not mistaken, in major league baseball to make a decision was Washington D.C. because D.C. is not a state, and so many of these ball clubs and everything are going through state regulations so it took right. them a little while to kind of figure out how to put the butts in the seats so i'm pretty sure every major league baseball stadium is going to have attendance i could be wrong there could be one or two that slips the crack and yeah. they they decide not to have anybody at these stadiums you know i could be and wrong on that and uh, I know this is uh, a question, at least I was, uh, well, I, I'm a nerd and I was browsing through YouTube the other night and came across the White House daily press briefing. So started to watch it because I'm a nerd and wants to know what's going on, going on with my country. Uh, so uh, one of the reporters, because a very hard hitting question, obviously asked if President Biden was going to be throwing out the first pitch at the game. And uh, for, uh, I guess, prioritization reasons, he is not. I have uh, a feeling we're not going to see presidents throwing out the first ball that much anymore. 
Really? Why yeah. do you say that? I, I just feel like with everything that's going on in the world politically, just in the sense of, man, the pe- there are people who don't like other people in office right now. And it's just, it's one of those things where no matter what happens, there's going to be fingers pointing at them and there's going to be memes about them and there's going to be videos of them and if it's a pitch that's low in the dirt and just slow rolls to the catcher that's gonna you know just send everybody into some sort of outrage so i i I genuinely feel like in today's day and age we're not gonna see a president throw out a first pitch for some time i i don't know i kind of disagree i i I think i think they it's it's a it's a visibility thing for them Right. You know, it's it's America's pastime. I think they want to be part of that tradition. And if they look at it in this context, you're probably going to throw it better than 50 Cent did. <laughs> one would think so and one would right? hope so. But if you don't throw it better than 50 Cent or Mariah Carey or any of those other people, then there's there's going to be jokes and there's going to be like they're going to be the laughing stock. And I, I just yeah. feel like in today's global political climate it's just one of those things where it might not necessarily it i don't know i i just i'd feel like it's something that's going to be a lost tradition one less thing for them to be criticized for right yeah honestly and it's just it's something so mundane and something so quote-unquote traditional but i could see it happening and i could see it being being that case and Look, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's necessarily got the mystique and the prestige anymore that it used to. Um, I, I, throwing up the first pitch of a baseball game, I, I feel like baseball is just in general, um, it's lost a lot of its luster as the national pastime, and it's the National Football League and any kind of football that reigns supreme in this country, so... If they want to well, have anybody visual show up, you know, for a football game, that's going to get a lot more people's attention right. than, uh, I don't know, like a Nationals-Mets game. Well, here, here's what's going to be getting attention at Mets games this season. Um, growing up, I was, I was a fan of the, um, the somewhat controversial but Colts fan favorite black New York Mets jerseys oh, that from the early were. 2000s. Of course you were. Uh, I think my, my, my dad hates them, but growing up as a kid, seeing Mike Piazza in it, like, oh, this is cool, you know? Um, Steve Cohen, the new owner of the Mets, announced that they are coming back for select games in the 2021 season, and I am pumped. Did he actually announce that, though? Yes, 100% did. Where? Wayne Randazzo. When? on. I will... Hold on, I will... Oh, now uh, you got to do some research, and now you've no, got to no, no. actually was, look well, something he, up here. If you would ask me this before, I would have had the audio for you to include in the in the in the show. So there's all. Was, so he did it during like a, a meeting and or a press conference. Of it some was, sort. I believe, it, I I also texted this to you guys yesterday, so clearly you missed it. But anyway, uh, I believe it was R- Wayne Rendazzo from SNY um, interviewing Steve and uh, asked him about it. Yep, uh, I could say with absolute certainty that the black jerseys are coming back. It was just over a uh, a FaceTime interview with the two of them. Well, in in that's you know it's one of those things where I kind of take it with a, a grain of salt because Steve Cohen is known for saying just I mean I don't know if you've seen his Twitter account but just saying random and ridiculous and laughable sort of things. It's basically like a dad who you know <laughs> has Twitter and it's it's very <laughs> puzzling. Like somebody here recently said, "Hey, it's time to unfollow you," to Steve Cohen. He just tweets back at him, "I'll miss you." <laughs> he doesn't care. A couple days, a couple days ago, he tweets out, "Lindor is a heck of a player and a great guy. I hope he decides to sign." As the teams are publicly trying to, you know, the 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 two sides are trying to work out a deal for for Lindor to stay long term. Somebody yeah. tweets it to him, "Hey, throw in a couple of your quarter zip up shirts to seal the deal." And he says, "I would do that. Didn't think of that." <laughs> he was talking about the ravioli apparently that he had when they went out to eat and everything. It's just it's 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 wild. It was so 
so wild. And somebody asks, hey, what did Francisco Lindor get when they went out to eat and have dinner? Chicken parm. He responds. Like, it's it's just so puzzling to me that an owner is so transparent, but also so just out there. But listen, I will take it after after decades of the stone-faced, selfish, uh, ineptitude of the Wilpons. I will I will take Steve Cohen's weird mannerisms and Twitter habits any day. I will say this. I'm a bit puzzled as to why Mets fans kind of kind of seem to be shrugging their shoulders about a possible Lindor extension and thinking that what Lindor wants is a little out of price range. Steve Cohen was like Mets fans were so excited that Steve Cohen was coming in to build a winning and championship team. And this dude has all the money. Oh yeah. All the money. You should want him to spend all the money, even on a guy like Francisco Lindor. Just, I mean, for the, the Mets offered this. Francisco Lindor wants that. Mets fans are like, oh, he should be taking this and not that. No, you should be saying as a Mets fan, give this guy the world. We want this right. talented shortstop to be on our team long term and to be as happy as you know what so that he sticks around for the foreseeable future. I, I agree, and in that context, it makes perfect sense. I'll admit, even though I am a Mets fan and I'm very excited for opening day, I haven't been following along that closely just because you know there are other things in life that have been getting my attention. Oh, other priorities. Okay, I see how it is. No, so but so in in the context of of life, you know, I've been kind of gazing at the the Francisco Lindor headlines from the dugout, if you will. Um, but yeah, I agree. Like, I think if he came in touting this entire, you know, here's my, uh, my, my bank account, like, you know, I'm going to leave it to Sandy and the team to kind of figure out where it needs to be spent and just come to me when you need my signature, like, great. But yeah, like, why wouldn't you move heaven and earth to keep a guy like Francisco Lindor? Is it, what is it up to now? Like 400 mil? No, is that no, no, the, no, 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 no. It's not up to that. Or is that, that something else? It's, uh, if, hold on. See, now you put me on the spot. Now I got to look it up. If I'm not mistaken, Francisco Lindor wants 12 years, and th- uh, 350 million dollars, whereas the Mets were giving him a 10 year, 320 million dollar extension. Um, no, I take that back. Okay, according to some of the, the news reports I'm seeing, the Mets offered $325 million, but Lindor is holding firm on $385 million. So, um, oh, I see. I mean, oh, so he, it's a big chunk uh, of change, but Steve Cohen's <laughs> got the money, man. Right. You well, Mets it, fans wanted Steve Cohen to spend all this money and put a winning product out there on the field. Here you go. Here's your first chance to do it. I got the four hundred million dollars. It was uh, Pete Alonso was quoted as saying, "I hope they pay him four hundred million dollars." Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. He did say that on the airwaves of ESPN Radio here. Yeah, uh, I believe it was on Wednesday. So nice little plug there for yours truly in the mothership. So you, you didn't even get the reference when he was on your station? No, it took me a second to realize what you were talking oh, about, Lord. and then I remember put two and two together. Um, so. Switching gears just a little bit. You know what Thursday was, right? Is that a no? Is that a yes? No, I yeah, no, I I know. I it uh, yes, it was April Fool's Day. Exactly. So that means it's time to celebrate. I'm Peter the fool. It's where we take a look at some of the fools here on To The Weekend. Our first fool is April. That's it. That's all I got. April. She's a fool. Get it? Because April fools. Uh See what I did there? I'm, I'm, I'm cueing my... My imaginary sound effects for my imaginary roadcaster. There you go. So good. I'm so funny. 
It is, I mean, actually, uh, it is actually a very foolish name if we go by people who we know to be having the name April. April Ludgate from Parks and Rec. Pretty foolish person. Yeah. I'm Peter the Fool! Liar. I'm Peter the Fool! Right? Good people. Good people. I would, I would also say in the context of our last conversation, Steve Cohen's a little bit of a fool right now. Yeah. I mean, just get right? the deal done. God's sake. Did you ever I, participate in any sort of like crazy oh, April Fool's jokes yes. and stuff? Really? Well, so I don't know if it was actually an April Fool's joke, but uh, there were pranks were done in in college. Um, really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, probably the most notable one uh, was freshman year. Um, I, I got friendly. I made my college buddies before I met you uh, and James and everybody like uh, the, by the guys who I was living with in, in the quads at Ithaca. And we had some people who lived upstairs from us and they were just easy to pull pranks on like little things like hanging out with them, this and that. But we decided one day that we wanted to go big. And so we had the brilliant idea to um, take their room one day and, and flip it oh no oh yes oh no oh yeah oh yeah so we managed to um so it was my friends katie and Kristen, um and their room was obviously locked because they weren't there katie was a music major so she was always practicing and Kristen was working in the fitness center my friend will he managed uh to get Kristen's keys because he was friendly with her. Uh, he went to the fitness center, asked for her keys, because he said he left something in their room from the night before whenever we were hanging oh out there. My God. Bad move on her part, because that literally let the door open for us, left the door open for us to get inside and, and work our magic. So basically, we did not spare any detail. We took everything. I tell you from the placement of the Post-Its, on the desk to the plate to where little pins and pens were in desk drawers, wow. clothes in closets, take it and flip it 180 degrees, mirror image of each other. We did it all. That's incredible. That's impressive. And icing on the cake, it is all on video. Really? It is all on video. So we, not the actual flip, but the reactions to the flip. Yeah. Because wow. after after we had done everything, we knew they were coming back to their room later that night. Uh, we left one of the computers on uh, and basically put the brightness all the way down on the screen, but left the, the webcam on. So we were on like FaceTime yeah. and from my computer down to my dorm with their accounts up in their room. So we recorded the entire reaction as they came back into their room and saw it completely flipped. So much mischief impressive oh, yeah. i i i'm impressed man i was expecting it to be some sort of disaster and and everything that comes with that but holy hell it sounds like he had a hell of a time actually getting the job done yeah Good and then you. that that was one of them i have more but do you do you have do you have any nothing too crazy that i ever did on april fools or even i mean i used to do the whole prank call people thing when i was in high school for whatever reason because i thought it was so cool and it's like well let's try to call my my crush and prank her a little bit oh, 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 oh. you know things by like saying that. what the- i i don't know just stupid things like hey you're on the radio and you're about to win a, a brand new uh <laughs> brand new, i think it was like a snowmobile one time we tried to do and it was just so bizarre. Do, it was, do your top 40 voice. No, absolutely not. Come on. No, that's, we're, do it. Uh, maybe later we'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to that part of the conversation later. But the only things that really come to mind to me are I remember my, uh, my father used to work overnights. Um, and so he would, you know, get ready to start his, his day at, let's say nine or 10 o'clock at night, whatever it was. So he'd be out or up and, you know, going out and about and everything like that, getting ready for his day at, let's say eight or nine o'clock at night. So he'd always have some coffee ready for himself that late at night as I was a kid and, you know, getting ready for, for bed. So before I get ready for bed, I notice he's brewing his coffee. So I think to myself, oh, this is a prime opportunity 
to uh, do a little something something to his coffee. So what do I do? I go into the fridge, grab some hot sauce, dump oh, it in no. the coffee. I grab some salt. I grab some pepper. I grab some cayenne pepper. I grab some onion powder, garlic powder, whatever, whatever was in the fridge or in the cupboards. I grabbed it and I put it in his coffee. And I made sure to stick around to make to see what his reaction would be as he took that first sip. And from what I remember, it was not a good reaction. It was just a lot of coughing, a lot of eye bulging, a lot of just <laughs> confusion Dude. on his part. Dude, that's okay. Wow. You see, there's like two types of pranks. There's like the pranks that like you mess with people's stuff and then you mess with people themselves yeah the other thing the other one i remember doing too is does the the name for the the little hose thing have i mean is there a name for that i should say that's on a sink you know what i'm talking about on the sink it's it's like a little hose is there an actual name for that thing mini faucet it's not a mini faucet because it's not a faucet i mean it's a spray it's, it's a it's a hose right yeah, it's a, it's a, a mini, mini, hose? mini mini sink hose. Okay, so anyway, what you do is you take some scotch tape, tape it around the yep. the handle of that. Somebody turns on the sink, and boom, water goes everywhere. Yep. So I've done that before too. That that's a classic one. Um, the um, let's see. Oh, the other prank that we pulled on these same friends in college, uh, not, not messing with their stuff again, not themselves. Yeah. Uh, maybe themselves, like, you know, mentally. But um, so Katie, uh, she was the easy one to make fun of. Uh, Kristen, not not so much. But we got Katie back because um, in, in in school, if you ever wanted your bed lofted, all you do is need to hit up Res Life and say, hey, can you guys come loft our bed? Because we want to switch up our room design a little bit, right? Okay. So we basically put in the request for them saying, hey, we want to get our bed lofted. So we had the lofting materials delivered to their room while Katie wasn't there and uh, proceeded to loft her bed while her roommate watched. Um, so she, uh, she had a bunk bed for the rest of You're the semester. You're so bad. You're so bad, yeah. man. Yeah, we were, we were, yeah. Not nice. Yeah. You were those, no. you were those guys, huh? Well, yeah, in college, it's like a different environment. Like, uh, I don't know. It's that whole mis- mischief is a good word for college, mischief, to, depending um, on it. Uh, college was something, that's for sure. Um, do you want to hit up a, uh, an, a fun little bit that we haven't done in quite some time, but I feel like it's something that might as well get to it, considering that we're celebrating like April Fool's and the ridiculousness and foolishness of everything? Do I ever... Okay. This whole discussion is absolutely ridiculous. It's time for some rules of absurdity. Some of the dumbest laws across the United States of America. You go first. I insist. All right. Uh, We'll we'll keep picking on Georgia today, where it is apparently illegal to eat fried chicken except with your hands in Gainesville County Georgia it is against the law to eat fried chicken in any way except with your bare hands as much as the law might seem absurd it is enforced because in 2009 a 91 year old visitor from Louisiana was arrested and charged with eating fried chicken with a fork good lord that's strict as hell um I'm going to go to yeah. uh, the island of uh, Hawaii. Apparently, Aloha. no billboards are allowed in Hawaii. So I don't know if that's just their way of trying to keep the the, the land looking as, as beautiful and pristine as humanly possible, or what that's about. Huh. You don't want to ruin that entire beach, mountainous terrain, I guess. Something like that. All right, give me another one. It, um, <laughs> in North Carolina, it is illegal to sing off key, which I think should be a law everywhere. Gotcha. I'm not, I'm no singer, but I don't try to be a singer. That's the thing. I can carry a tune. I'm not too bad. Um, one of the last ones here in the state of Maine, Christmas decorations must not be up past January the 14th. 
which I mean, a lot of people don't have their Christmas decorations up till then. I think we had ours up until January 30th. Whoops. I'll, I'll give you January. I, I, I agree with January 14th, but if you want to push it, I'll give you to January. That's fine. That's fine. And here's the thing. I don't know why. I sometimes feel like I'm getting more and more in a festive mood at the end of the holiday season when everybody else is like throwing away their Christmas trees and taking down their ornaments and packing the stockings into the closet for another year. I find myself getting more and more into the Christmas spirit as everybody is getting out of the Christmas spirit for whatever reason. What? I think my internal clock is just always off. I, it, Christmas just kind of comes and it <laughs> happens, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, wait, it was Christmas. Here, let me celebrate the seasons now. And it comes yeah. after the fact. Are things just like in a constant state of being off for you? Oh, yeah. You have no idea. You're 100%. just a constant man of confusion. I and never just... know what day of the week it is. It's, Actually, though, I there are times where I think to myself, "Wow, this is a." I'm looking forward to today. It's going to be a nice Friday. Nope, it's only Tuesday, and I, <laughs> I realize, "Wow, you're an absolute moron." Um, one thing I forgot to ask you about, um, if and if we're going back to talking about, you know, football is the the big sport in America. This could be that could be very symbolic because of the. Um, the attention to detail that men's warehouse places on their suits. And and we need to talk about this because I feel like it's a very valid conversation uh, you know, coming off of last week, right? Okay. So we found out after last week's show due to research uh, from our good friends, uh, Steph, actually, uh, you, my friend, as you know, can get Buffalo Bill's lining the inside of your tuxedos. Yeah, what's it going to cost? Do we know? Do we have a price tag on that? I don't know, but I wanted to see how serious you were about this because I think it's a fantastic idea. All right, I'm throwing it down. I'm throwing that kind of money down. I don't care. You're what doing it. it. Well, I, I I should. I don't you know. You should, yes. I don't know if I actually will, but I should do it. Absolutely you should. Hmm. As much as you should go to a Paul McCartney concert, as much as you should meet Bruno Mars you should meet Bru- where where is this coming from meet Bruno Mars these are just Mars things that you and- should do in your life oh okay I guess I can try and make that happen and try to accomplish that if I set my heart to it anything is possible <laughs> right <laughs> yes absolutely is that, it is, is. That where you want me to go with this I, I'm just I'm trying to figure this out for a second you need you need another cup of coffee is what you need, need. Cup of coffee and a shot of Jack or something. Whew. Man, let me tell you. Whatever it's been you say. A week. But hey, we'll, we'll, we, will, we will keep everybody updated about the, uh, the tuxedo evolution. Evolution? <laughs> as we plan for your, uh, your wedding extravaganza. Can't wait. It'll be a blast. Hey, you go uh, take a nap. Do something. Get your head in order. Just just get it together, man. You're a mess. I'm a train wreck. But make Here sure you, you rate, subscribe, and review. i tell you to do that. There you go. Have a good week, buddy. Hey, you stay classy, my friend. You stay classy, my friend. See ya. Peace. <laughs>